Hi everyone, it is currently New Year's Eve, hence why I've got a little bit of makeup on. Even though we're not going anywhere and I've actually just got lazy clothes on, I thought I'd put makeup on. Uh, we're going to have some drinks and play some games, just us two tonight. And I uh, just thought I'd make a bit of an effort because there's no other reasons to make an effort right now. So it's a new year, practically. And I've spent... The last few days of December, not really reading anything. I finished a Christmassy book, was it Monday? I don't remember. But recently I finished a Christmassy book. And then I was like, I don't want to start anything new because I don't want to be mid-reading something when we hit the new year. Because I really always dislike carrying books over from one year to the next. I don't know about you, but I really don't like the idea of starting a book in one year and then marking it as red in the next year it feels really cheaty i have done it some years because sometimes it's just unavoidable but i do feel like i'm cheating for it so i'm not doing that this year i had still got one book on the go but i have temporarily put that down i've not read any of it since i want to say possibly before we moved into this house so a good two months so i was like I have to probably reread it at this point anyway, so... Also, I think I'm going to make a cup of tea because I can feel myself dozing, although then I'll ruin my lipstick. No, I'll wait till after I film this video to make the cup of tea. I can always re-put the lipstick on. Luke's still at work right now anyway. It's about... What time is it? No concept of time. It's just gone one o'clock. I've just had my lunch. And, yeah, I just thought, rather than start filming... <laughs> At like a couple of minutes past midnight when I'm probably very under the influence of alcohol I thought I'd just talk about reading now and then I'll update tomorrow when I'm in some sort of state to do so with what progress I'm making although I don't know how much reading of this first book choice I would do before moving on to the Amazon book I'm gonna go back to the first reads thing of picking a couple of first reads and reviewing those. So I'm going to go back to doing that. And it makes sense to work on that first because there's only two of those books, depending on the month, one or two of those. Whereas my review copies for January, I have 11. Now, just to quickly run through what I do have noted on here, when I know the author's name, I will tell you. Off the top of my head, I can't tell you what a single one of these books is about, except for the first one I'm going to be reading, because I have actually looked that up. So, in this video, or if it ends up too long, in this video series where I split it, I am hoping to read and review The Island by Ben McPherson, The Hat Makers by Tamsin Merchant. I do remember from the other day actually when I was adding this to my Kindle that this is a middle grade. I remember that much. The cover was really colourful. <laughs> the Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. A Question Mark is Half a Heart by Sophia Lundberg. The Last Thing to Burn. People Like Her by Ellery Lloyd. The first one out of those I'm going to be picking up is The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. This is a Jane Eyre retelling but with some sort of like thrillery twist as well I think. And... And I really quite like the idea of that. This is something a bit different. It's definitely not something I'd normally pick up. I don't intentionally usually pick up retellings. So this could be really quite interesting. It'll definitely be the one that I start reading pretty much as midnight hits. Because I cannot start the Amazon reads until they actually get updated on the website. Which I'm assuming will be sometime early tomorrow. So I can't start those until minimum tomorrow so I might be able to read the first book before moving on to those I don't know also with the whole new year thing I always feel so encouraged desperate to read a lot and we've just gone into tier four literally today we've gone into tier four so I'm really not gonna have anything better to do for probably I'd hesitate to guess probably all of January so I'm just going to turn into some sort of reading machine, hopefully. I want to try and read a book a day. That would really help get my year off to a really good start. Because January is always a really good reading for month for me anyway. Most years I probably read between 10 and 20 books in January. And that's with being 
busy. I'm going to be busy. I'm not going to be doing much of anything. I'm not even going to be at work. So 20 to 30 books should be doable. I mean, if I don't finish literally a book a day, I'm not going to be too worried. The goal of this reading vlog is definitely not to see how many books I can finish each day. That's not happening at all. But yeah, I'm really excited, motivated and have less than 11 hours until I can finally read something again. It does feel weird to have not read anything for this many days, even though I've been in an awful reading slump recently. Because I am desperate to read right now, because I've got that January feeling already, I am desperate. And I just keep holding off, holding off. Imagine if I'd burnt out by just going on some sort of reading binge this week. And then we hit New Year's Day and I was like, right, don't want to read anything. That'd just be terrible. So I will see you tomorrow when I'm probably looking a lot less made up, a lot more sorry for myself and probably just a state, to be honest. But hopefully I will also have a reading update because I will try and get in bed and do at least a little bit of reading tonight before sort of totally just passing out. <laughs> see you tomorrow and see you next year. Happy New Year and... I have started this reading year off to a wonderful start. I'm a lot further than what I thought I'd be. So, as I said, it is the 1st of January today. And the time is currently about 9.30. I've been awake about an hour and I've been reading. I also got a teeny bit of reading done last night. And I have read 18% so far, which takes me up to chapter 9 of The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. And this is a book that I received for free from the publishers via NetGalley, which it says is due to be published on the 5th of January. But it's got a lot of ratings and reviews and Goodreads has given me different dates. So I need to look into that. It might be that maybe the paperback comes out at some point this year and that I don't know. <laughs> so confused. Anyway. I'm enjoying this book so much. I think it's going to be just the right sort of book to start the new year off with because it's such a quick read. I'm just flying through the pages and it makes me feel really accomplished that I'm flying through it so quickly. So as I said, this is sort of a Jane Eyre retelling, but with a bit of a twist. And that twist is a thrillery twist from what I can gather from reviews. And basically this book, so we're following Jane as the main character, but that's not her real name and we don't know what her real name is. And she's a dog walker. It's the way she's currently earning money to be able to have some sort of living. She's got herself into some sort of trouble and she's had to move in with what I'm assuming is her ex. I can't remember his name, but he's quite a bit of an asshole. Meanwhile, she's quite a bit of an asshole too. I don't really like her. She seems to have this thing about stealing. And she's quite desperate to pretty much try and get with this Eddie guy, Mr. Rochester. So that she can get out of her current situation and no doubt milk all of his money. Is kind of the impression I get. Yeah, she's she's a bit of a piece of work, to be honest. Meanwhile, we're meeting loads of other characters, people that live in the same area. And there's no one likeable at all. But that's not a bad thing. Like, I'm loving to hate all these people so much. So I guess we'll wait and see. Meanwhile, the mystery of what happened to Mr. Rochester's wife and another woman. Because they are assumed to have been drowned. I'm just, I'm curious as to what direction this is all going to go. I did read Jane Eyre, was it last year? I think it was last year. And so it's relatively fresh in my head. So yeah, I'm I'm having a great time. And I have every faith that throughout today, I'll read a few chapters here, a few chapters there, and finish this book. Because it's really difficult to put down. And it's just really enjoyable. Okay, so update. It's a couple of hours later and I'm now at 
And what I can say is this book's really twisty. It's full of secrets. Like they're both clearly keeping so many secrets. We've learned some of Jane's secrets and a bit more about her, but I feel like there's still quite a bit we don't know about her. Meanwhile, he is obviously a much darker horse than what she realises, but I think he's also a much darker horse than what we realise. I dread to think the things that I just don't know about him yet. And then everyone else in the village too, the village, now I sound like her, it's more like a neighbourhood. Everyone else there too, yeah, they're just really still not great people. And I almost don't blame her for stealing off them back when she was doing that. I am getting quite sleepy while reading because I didn't get much sleep last night. <sighs> and so I think I'm going to take a break from reading now and we're going to play some Monopoly. Now, I'm at 43% and my Kindle thinks it's going to be about another three and a half hours to finish the book. So, three and a half hours, that's doable later on, I'm sure. I'm determined to finish this book today. <laughs> it's late, but I wanted to update you very quickly that I have finished the book. I can't remember the last time I read a book in a day. Also, that a book gripped me enough to make me want to read it in a day. It was just absolutely amazing, the suspense, the atmosphere, the plot the twists. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad that I read this book. And so I obviously gave it five stars. Absolutely blew my mind. Loved it. So tomorrow I will be starting the second book that I have got. I've not checked what book it is though, so I'll get back to you tomorrow. I am really tired now. I just want to go to bed. So it's the morning of the 2nd of January and I've been reading again for about an hour. But before I get into what I've been reading and what I think of it so far, I thought I should say a few more things about the wife upstairs. So I did check and that book does indeed come out on the 5th of January. So as you're watching this, it will definitely be out and... I've actually read it before publication date for once in my life. Every book in this video I receive for free from the publishers via NetGalley, so I should probably slot that in. And yeah, I don't know, I should have watched the clip back exactly just how well I sold the book last night, but when I finished it, it was just amazing. I loved the atmosphere, I loved the characters, like, so many of the characters were just god awful and I had a great time hating them as silly as that sounds and I just loved how the plot was interwoven it was such a genuinely really well thought out book and you don't need to have read Jane Eyre to enjoy it or get anything from it at all it's only loosely sort of linked to Jane Eyre really so no worries there. So I was looking through my possible next books and the next books that I was picking from they are all pu being published on the 7th of January and so I'll be reading all three of them like in quick succession but the one that I am actually going for and I've actually already started I don't know why I'm saying going for I'm like 14% of the way through already is the last to burn oh why can I never remember the names of anything the last thing to burn by Will Dean I own at least one other Will Dean book I can't remember what it's called but yeah I never got around to reading that I will do eventually I hope but I haven't yet read it and I thought that I'll just dive into this one instead and see how I get on with his writing. Apparently this is very different to his previous work and this is already proving to fulfil what reviews were saying about it because I did have a look at the reviews last night to kind of help me pick which of the three books to read. So this is kind of a 
dark thriller. Though I've not thought of it as a thriller so far, more, more just horror. And we're following a young, well, I say young, I'm assuming relatively young. We're following a girl who has been tricked, essentially, to come and live in England as part of, like, human trafficking. And some really horrendous things have clearly happened to her. We learn very, very early on that one of her feet, instead of it just, like, being attached straight, is coming off at ninety a 90 degree angle and that the ankle is horridly swollen and it's really described in quite disgusting detail which was really difficult to read all the reviews of this book say it's really hard to read but that it's so worth it and that everyone should check it out so I'm hoping that that will be the message that I can also bring you. Although I will say that if you were squeamish, this book's probably not for you. If it's definitely going to be a really hard, harrowing read. But it is quite short, apparently. It's just over 250 pages. So it's a quick, difficult read <laughs> rather than a quick, easy read. And anyway, I'm going to go and get up now, have a shower, have some tea, read some more of the book and update you again later. So it is still the 2nd of January, the time actually is quarter 12 in the evening and I, about half an hour ago, finished the last thing to burn. It's taken me half an hour just to really sort of gather myself and also just to stop messaging people going, oh my god, you need to read this book because, oh my god, if you can handle it, you need to read this book it's just been absolutely gripping. I've not been able to put it down all day. Every chance I've got, I've been picking my Kindle up and just reading it. I will say I can't recommend this for everyone, sadly, because it's just a really difficult read. It's quite a short read. It's around 250 pages, but it's mental. It's draining. I annoyed Luke while I was reading it, actually. I was sat there and there'd be a really horrific description and I'd be there going, right, making noises and biting my fingers away. And then as the book got more tense further on, I was there just like fiddling around with my top and like just fidgeting and he was just like... So it was a very uncomfortable read. So this follows, as I said, I think earlier, a woman who is part of a human trafficking ring. Her and her sister leave Vietnam in the hope of going to the UK to earn some money to send back to their parents and in search of the good old standard belief of a better and more money enriched life here. They of course don't get that. The first year or so doesn't seem too bad from what we learn from the book but then they get separated and it's from there that things really go downhill for both of them. At the beginning of the book, when we first meet the main character, whose name, a Vietnamese name, I don't stand a bat in hell's chance of remembering, let alone knowing how to pronounce. But she is referred to as Jane in the book for most of the time because the person who's got her captive calls her Jane because he clearly basically has some major mummy issues because his mum was supposedly called Jane or his ex-wife is supposedly called Jane or quite frankly anyone he has in his house long enough he will name Jane so yeah he has issues he also has a, has anger issues and he lives somewhere really remote so they live on a farm in the middle of like practically nowhere the next neighbor's house is something like 10 to 12 miles away it's just typical English farm fields all around surrounding this farmhouse so really secluded and this enables him to be able to really control Jane. So another farmer that lives nearby, who's also sort of in on this trafficking ring, he kind of like helps keep an eye out on the farm. But also the main guy who lives there has also got cameras up everywhere. So he will watch Jane's every move all day. She has got household chores to do while he is out on the farm. 
if she doesn't do something correctly, like if she doesn't do a job that he's expected to have done by a certain time, she'll get punished. If she been burnt his dinner, she'll get punished. If she tries to even remotely sort of stand up for herself in any way, she gets punished. And the way that he's been punishing her is by taking things off her each time. So she's only gone there with a small handful of possessions anyway. And with each really bad infringement in his eyes, he removes one of her possessions and burns it. Hence the title of the book. And it's just so sad to see her lose these bits of her, like, remaining bits of her identity. Meanwhile, she suffers at his hands with domestic abuse terribly. He abuses her over anything and it does not make for easy reading. It's incredibly difficult to read, which is one of the main reasons why I was hesitant on who I would recommend this to because it's just so hard to read. I mean, I really don't struggle with reading difficult stuff and I struggled with it. It's like Luke was telling me to just put it down and I was like, well, no, but I really was struggling. It was so hard going, but it needed to be. This is might well be a work of fiction, but to some degree and extent, these sorts of things are people's realities, and so I had to keep going. Then on top of that, we have the sexual abuse that she suffers at his hands. There are other things that happen in the plot and other people that get involved, and it's just so gripping, so tense. I would describe this book as a very quiet, claustrophobic, claustrophobic read, which honestly will turn your stomach it is definitely the first half is more horror than anything else and then sort of suspenseful it becomes a horror suspense thriller and that's kind of the order that it all goes into it all really just builds up into this suspenseful thriller but starts off as just pure horror of just unimaginable proportions and I just, I honestly feel like I don't even know what to do with myself now. This book is going to stay with me for a long time. Obviously, I gave it five stars, but also it's definitely in my top 20 books of all time, possibly my top 10 books of all time, which kind of sounds a bit morbid and weird that such a serious book would be. But it's just, it's the effect it's had on me that is kind of leading to that thought process. And meanwhile, the main character, Jane, honestly, she is so strong. She's one of my favourite characters of all time, too. Like, she's in my top 10 favourite characters. Female fictional characters ever. Definitely, without a doubt. Amazing. Just her fight deep inside to keep going no matter what was just, yeah. So... After such a dark read, after those I listed off last night as my next possible options, I will be going for the middle grade. I can't think of the title right now. I can't think of the author right now. All I can think of is horrific scenes from that book. I'm never going to be able to look at ankles in quite the same way ever again. You will get that if you ever read it. But yeah, I'm definitely going to need something a lot lighter, a bit more fun after this read because that was dark. That's one of the darkest books I've probably ever read. So it is now the 3rd of January and this is going really well for me. 3rd of January, 3rd book of the vlog. Splendid. So I did start reading The Hatmakers. Is that what it's called? I think so. I did start reading that last night. I read 10% of it before going to sleep and was quite enjoying what I read actually. It was sweet which was just what I needed but it is now time I told you what that book was about. So this story is following a young girl named Cordelia who lives in this magical world where different people make like magical items so their family make magical hats and her father has gone missing while getting ingredients for a magical hat and the family are assuming he's dead. She doesn't want to believe that he's dead, 
but yeah I'm not sure what's going to come of all that because that's pretty much as far as I got so yeah magical families making magical oh you can see yourself <laughs> magical families making magical items their family make magical hats and he's gone missing and presumed dead and they're upset with her that she's trying to go to extremes of finding him so yeah that's all i know quite excited for something a bit more magical after that dark read yesterday so i've just been reading again for a little while i just thought i'd look this book up and check its release date and this one is one that has been pushed back so i'd got this down from netgalley as a 7th of january release this isn't coming out till i think it was like the 18th of february so just thought i'd quickly let you know of that i mean we're not too far away from february are we really so it doesn't matter too much and also i've been reading a little bit more and i've just watched the first hat get made that has happened in the book and this hat's been made for the king and Cordelia wants to be able to make a hat herself, but apparently there's a lot of training involved and she's not old enough to be at that point yet. So that's mainly what's been going on. And they've been emphasising how you could easily end up with bad ingredients and that if you're not careful what you use, then you'll get yourself into a lot of trouble. So obviously at some point, some bad ingredients are going to pop up in this book, I'm sure. And a lot of them are kept in this like locked cupboard and yeah i'm just really intrigued it's nice to be reading something so fantastical after yesterday so the date is wednesday the 6th and i slowed down my reading a bit it wasn't a conscious thing i knew that i wasn't gonna keep up a book a day forever it was never gonna be any sort of realistic thing but then I think I just needed to take a little breather after the heavy reading of the previous book. So while I am reading The Hat Makers, I'm still even now only about halfway. I'm really enjoying it, but I'm just taking it a lot slower. I didn't read... So what date is what? I didn't read at all. Is it Monday I didn't read at all? Or if I did, it was actually like 10 pages or something. Then yesterday uh, I read for about an hour before bed. And today I'm going to try and finish it. Famous last words. I have spent most of today cleaning and listening to my audiobook. So I've just filmed a separate clip in a different video for that. So uh, it's not like I've not been doing any reading today. So if I don't finish it today, I'm not overly bothered. But yeah, I've only got a few hours left of it, I think, at this point. So I'd quite like to just curl up under the blanket and get it read. I think that's the goal. Oh, and in the bit I read last night, it was so funny because I've got kind of like this little kind of soft spot for Tudor history. And Henry VIII popped up in this book. It just made me giggle so much. Like the way that they could twist Henry VIII into this fantasy book in a way that felt so realistic. Like I admire the author so much for this. Like... It honestly felt like this could have been a thing. It really felt like Henry VIII might have wanted a hat making and a cloak making and a stick making and shoes making, like magical ones. And you could imagine how he would have gone about this. And yeah, it was just so, it was so getting me in the zone. So yeah, I'm really enjoying the book and I'm going to go and get back to it now. So it is the 7th of January, it's a really cold frosty morning and what better to do than to curl up under my blanket and read a book which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and finish The Hat Makers today, is that what it's called? I hope that's what it's called otherwise I feel an idiot. I'm going to try and finish that book today anyway and I think I've only got about an hour left, so I'm really hoping I can just lie here for an hour and get it done and update you shortly. The bit that I read in bed last night, I was just absolutely loving. This book's really got a lot of charm to it. It's got a lot of fun to it. And now that I'm further in, the characters have really grown on me too. I wasn't that bothered about the characters earlier on. And sure, the plot was okay, but I wasn't hooked. But now I'm hooked. I love these characters, I love this plot, and it's so much fun. It's dark, but 
but it's fun. And so I can't wait to see how this last hour's worth of the book goes. So I did it. I just finished The Hat Makers and what a feel good book. It was so much fun. There was so much sense of adventure, so much just child goodness. I really, really, really enjoyed it. I think I'm going to give it four stars. So I'm a little bit gutted though because it ends on a mega cliffhanger and the next book isn't going to be out until spring 2022. What am I going to do? Oh, I hope it's one of those series that I actually remember to continue. I really do because I'm terrible with that. So yeah, the next book I'm going to read is a thriller but I can't remember what it's called and I'm not picking it up yet anyway. I'm going to work on another video first which is going to be January's first reads and then come back to this one and carry on reading my uh, arcs for January. So yeah, um, see you in a different vlog before this one. So it's Wednesday the 13th of January and I am back with this vlog after taking some time out to work on a different vlog. And I'm starting The Island by Ben McPherson. I started it last night actually, I read about eight or ten percent in bed and it's a interesting one so it's a psychological thriller and we start off with a girl who's on an island with like loads of other kids and some adults i don't really know what's going on quite frankly and she gets this like weird inkling that something bad's going to happen and these police come onto the island and they're hearing that there's been an explosion in Oslo, this book set in Norway. There's been an explosion in Oslo, like a kind of terrorist attack kind of thing, got a bomb going off. And these police are here to talk to them, but she gets this weird inkling that they're not the police. So I'm just making breakfast. <laughs> so she gets this weird feeling that they're, ouch, not the police. And all of a sudden, like, tries to start warning people. And then she gets shot. They shoot her and then they start like killing people basically so her inkling was correct i don't feel like that's particularly spoilery because like i said this is the first eight percent at most of the book that this has happened and then not long after that when she's trying to escape with some others we swap perspective to something totally different and i've not really worked out what's going on with that perspective yet because these people are just kind of i think they're in oslo and they've found out about the news of the bombing but don't get how they're linked other than that yet it's all a bit i'm not too sure what's going on basically but yeah my plan today between cleaning my house is to read a lot of this book so i'm going to update you in a bit when i've got a bit more clue what's going on i will say i was really liking the first kind of part the first perspective i got last night i was really enjoying that it really worked well for me the tension the suspense i was like couldn't turn the pages fast enough so let's see if that continues because it's got some mixed reviews on goodreads meanwhile I just don't get what this second perspective is yet. Hopefully it starts making sense soon. So I did some reading and I've now paused to do some deep cleaning of the kitchen. So I'm now audio booking for a different vlog. And basically I just wanted to quickly check in while I remember to tell you that I now know who those other people are. So they are her, like the main girl whose perspective we get originally. They're her family. So her mom, my dad, her sister and I'm not gonna tell you what happens, but I've just finished their part for now. And I was just like, what? What is going on? This book's weird. And not necessarily always in a good way. Like, it's not bad. I'm enjoying it. I'm having a good time. But occasionally I'm a bit like, wait, what's going on? It just feels a bit poorly written in some spots. So that is a downside, but overall I'm actually really enjoying it. Okay, it's Monday the 18th of January and this vlog needs to take a more serious route because I've looked at the date 
and I've looked how many arcs I have left that I want to read for this vlog. This is the date I want this vlog to go up. I need to read a book a day and squish another one in somewhere to get them all in. Not a realistic goal, but I'm going to try it anyway. So for the next nine days, not even that, eight days, I'm probably seven actually. Which means I need to get two books in a day. But yeah, for the next week, I need to read at least a book a day so that this is the video I want it to be. So this has now turned into some sort of challenge while doing this. But yeah, I really want this year to be the year where I keep on top of my net galley arcs and I read each book in time. And ideally I'd have been reading these in December. But I wasn't really in much of a reading mood in December. I barely, barely really read in December. So as a result, I'm going to have the same problem in February because I wanted to read my February books in January too, but that's clearly not going to happen. Who knows? Maybe I'll turn into some sort of reading machine. So I am going to now carry on reading The Island. How far into it am I? That is a good question. I'm currently reading. I've got my Kindle so organised, it's making me feel good. 31%. So I am 31% of the way in. It thinks I've got just under six hours left to read this book. So I can finish this today. This I can do. I'm just worried about what the rest of the week is going to bring. Oh, it's going to be an interesting one. Also, I want to quickly say on the subject of the island. So we've covered the whole terrorist issue thing. And I think that there's a really interesting conversation going on in this book in terms of terrorists and what people stereotypically expect to be a terrorist and the issue of colour of a person and terrorism and just how wrong you can perceive that. So the guy was like, oh, this can't be a terrorist incident because the people that are accused of doing this are the wrong colour. And obviously white people can be terrorists. So... Yeah, I just wanted to throw that that is being kind of discussed silently in between the lines of the narrative as well. And I need to go and get reading. Stop waffling, get reading. Hi everyone, and I'm having to stand right by the window just to get any sort of lighting today. It's really rainy and disgusting out. The date is the 19th and... I finished the island last night in bed. Oh my goodness. I might be able to do this yet. So what an interesting book. I really can't say an awful lot about this book because it would spoil it so much. But I will say that the middle definitely let it down for me. The beginning and the end were really strong, like that ending. Wow. I didn't see anything coming and I don't know whether it's just like me or whether it was genuinely really well done in that sense. I've, my mind got blown. I didn't expect all the twists and turns that happened at all. The ending was a total shock to me. I don't even mean the very end. I mean like the last third of the book. I was like, oh. So I can't remember if I've told you anything about this book. So I will just re-mention that we focus on a girl who is on an island in Norway and... There is a terrorist attack there. Meanwhile, her parents are somewhere near Oslo and a bomb goes off there. And we follow the fallout in both directions of what happens to these, what happens to this family. And there's so much grief involved and there's so much of an interesting discussion around terrorism and who commits terrorism and radicalization. And yeah, it was insightful. And it's just such a shame that the middle portion was just so slow because it meant that I actually gave this book three stars. So I'm gonna have to go and move now to somewhere where the lighting is slightly more crap because I'm not sure what my next read is. So I need to go and check the old diary to see what book is next in date. 
Okay, so next up is People Like Her by Ellery Lloyd. The only thing I can remember about this book is that it's something to do with a mum using social media. Really can't remember beyond that. So I guess I'll jump in and update you once I have an idea what it's about. I know there's one that back when I could remember what it was about a few weeks ago, I was really, really excited to be getting to. And it came out earlier this month, so I can't wait to dive in now. Okay, I remember properly what this book is now, and oh my god, I'm so excited. So this book, as I said, it's about a mum who uses social media, but it's more than that. So first of all, this is a dual perspective book, and from what I remember now, so I remember seeing Victoria talk about this on what Victoria read. This is co-written by a couple. So I'm assuming the woman's taken the woman's perspective and the man's taken the man's perspective. But that is just an assumption. Um, at least that's how I'd assume that you'd co-write easily. Uh, I don't know for sure though. And yeah, it's co-written. So I... I'm happy to be reading my first co-written book of the year. And this follows a woman who pretends on Instagram that she's such a typical struggling mum with kids making a mess and that she fell into this whole Instagram thing totally by accident and that, you know, she's just got lucky. <laughs> then we get the husband's perspective where you find out that his, li his chapter literally starts with bullshit, 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 bullshit. And he's like, I'm not calling my wife a liar. But she's definitely twisting the truth a lot. And it was all very much planned from the moment that she'd barely been pregnant, like five minutes. She was already hiring an agent and kind of securing social media handles. And you can tell that, you know, the intention's there because whether she's really going through the things that these mums are going through she's still providing that reassurance that they need that there's someone out there going through the same thing and creating a platform because apparently she's got one million followers in which these mums could then also find each other so i don't think that's too much of an issue but then after we've had her perspective and his perspective there's another perspective that pops in and I remember someone saying now that this is like going to be some sort of stalker. We don't know anything else more than this right now, except that this person is clearly scorned. And yeah, they can't forgive her for something she's done. And so they're now out for revenge. And we don't know anything else. I am only 4% in, so I'm not expecting to have much of a clue right now. But now that I've realised properly that I'm remembering what book this is I'm so excited I think it's gonna lend itself well to binge reading I think it is one that I'm gonna be able to just sit here and totally fly through today so let's see if I end up being right so 11 minutes in and this book really has me genuinely thinking because I've just read a bit where it was on about how people often try and make their lives look perfect on social media and Instagram and that there's been plenty of things written about that. And that's true. I mean, to name one thing, literally off the top of my head, there's My Not So Perfect Life by Sophie Kinsella. Great book. Love it. And yeah, it's very much perceived that people are lying on social media and making their lives look so much better than what they are. But you never assume that someone would be doing the opposite. You never assume that someone's got this amazing life and that they're making it look worse than it is in order to get followers. I mean, it does make you wonder if that genuinely actually happens an awful lot. Did I just, yeah, it had me thinking and I thought I'd share that. So I am now 32% into the book. I stopped for a little lunch break and now I'm just going to try and knock out as much of the book as I can this afternoon. And... It's really suiting itself well to reading in one go, as I said before. The pacing is excellent. I'm really 
intrigued as to who this stalker is and what they're going to do. I am so scared of what they're going to do. Like, there are children involved in this book. I'm so scared. Something that's already happened, I feel like, was probably them. And, oh, it's just terrifying. To read this book as a parent must be awful. I'm so glad I don't have children because, yeah, this is making me really, like, anxious. So I'm just like... Oh my goodness. And it does really make yourself think as well, like in terms of, for example, even just myself with my very, very small YouTube channel. I do try to be careful what I actually put online. You never know what someone might be able to recognise in a background and be able to like work out where you live from that. It's just, it's definitely a very scary thing. And also just really over the top like the people who do this to the extreme it's scary you know like why would you go to the ex well no i know why people because the extent they do because they want the instagram fame or the youtube fame but it's totally overtaken this main character's life i mean the husband has been quoted as being like in awe of how she manages everything but it's not a life is it it's definitely not a life like questioning every move making sure everything is instagram ready for whenever she needs to take make a post she's got everything that's scheduled everything is just so military ran almost it's like just let your kids be kids i don't know i need to get back to reading and stop waffling it's another rainy dark day so the date is the 20th and in bed last night i did finish people like her i think what it was called them um i think i should warn you that this book contains loss of a child to a baby sort of age also uh how to do this without spoiling anything baby loss also miscarriage i think that covers the worst of them without spoiling anything but yeah this book was such a ride i think in the end i'm gonna give it four stars i really enjoyed it but it hadn't got that extra something to give it the five stars but the ending was great it was quite the roller coaster uh nail biter the suspense throughout this book just builds wonderfully and i really want to check out more by this author in the future because i really liked her writing and yeah definitely one to check out in my opinion can't remember the name of the next book we're reading right so next up is a question mark is half a heart by sophia lundberg can't remember much of what this is about except that it's a hard-hitting contemporary where there are two timelines one of which is in the 1970s in Sweden. Now, I've lived in Sweden before, so I love reading books that are set in Sweden, especially when they're done by Swedish authors, which I believe this author is looking at that name. I'd have to go and check. But Lundberg is a very Swedish last name, or at least Scandinavian last name. So, yeah, I really can't wait to dive into this one today and, again, try and read it all in one day. I mean, I'm managing this so far. I'm getting the chunk read in the day and then I'm finishing it in bed at night. So I'm doing it, but oh, I hope I don't end up in a reading slump from this. So I'm off to a very slow start today. It's half past ten and I haven't started reading yet. But I have literally just opened the book and in the contents pages we have got like a rundown of each chapter and it tells you where each chapter is set so most of the chapters are in New York or in Havide Gotland in Sweden um but there are some chapters that are in Stockholm <clears throat> and Visby and also Paris so yeah I'm actually gonna start reading now and stop procrastinating or I won't get this finished today it's 11 o'clock in the morning and so basically like 
an hour, half an hour since I last updated you and I've read like three pages and I just, I really don't want to read today. I think I've burnt myself out, which is bad. But realistically, if I just don't get to every book, I don't get to every book and I might just stop trying to force myself to read and actually just do what I want today, which is clean the house. Lord knows I need to clean this house, but also just play on the Xbox or the PlayStation a bit. I think, I think today is going to be an eye rest day. Well, that's not going to rest my eyes. But yeah, I'm going to just take a pause and see if I feel like reading later. If I do, I'll let you know. But otherwise, I'm just going to start this day again tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, I'm just going to try and read the entire book. I just need one day off of not trying to read an entire book a day. I just... I can't face it. I actually cannot face it. Not that you'll know it because this is the next clip for you, but I've actually not vlogged in nearly a week. I've not been feeling very well at all. I had an absolutely stinking cold. So the date is now Wednesday the 27th of January, which means that this video is a day late. Yesterday I had to panic film a video so I didn't break my New Year's resolution of uploading every Tuesday. And so I looked at what age I would be to try and read my entire owned TBR. That was painful. If you want to check that out, I will link that in the cards. But yeah, uh, I suppose that means that I need to get cracking back to reading. I do feel a little bit better today. I don't feel fabulous. But I feel a little bit better. So I should be able to read today without feeling like dying, quite frankly. I'd caught the most stinking cold. And I... I've shifted it now. I just felt so unwell. So I am going to curl up now and read. And I had some things that I hadn't addressed from, I don't know whether it was last clip or a couple of clips ago, regarding this book. So the author, as I said, Sophia Lundberg, I have double checked. She is indeed a Swedish author. She was born in Sweden and she still lives in Sweden. She now lives in Stockholm. And as I said before, that was my major reasoning for picking this book up. I've also since realised that this was a re this was originally published in Swedish. This is a translated work. So ticking a box there. And I'm really enjoying it. I found the writing style a little bit difficult to get into at first. And I'm assuming that is the usual, it's a translated work, it's always a bit meh until you adjust to it. But now I've adjusted to it, I'm bloody loving this book. So we follow a character named, I should know how to say this, I should definitely know how to say this, Elin, I'm going to say. Yeah, I'm going to stick with Elin. And she now lives in New York, she's a successful photographer, she's got a gorgeous husband, she's got a 17 year old daughter. Her life by all means is going absolutely fabulously but when she was a child she lived in Sweden and she's from Sweden and some things have been cracking off so you follow two timelines you've got her current time well her current time I can't remember the year 2017 I think in New York and what's going on with her life now and then you have every other chapter pretty much is her childhood in Sweden. So we've got to know her neighbours and her best friends and what was going on with the family drama. Because there's a lot of family drama in this, let me tell you. But there's also meant to be some sort of secret according to the blurb. And I have no idea what that family secret currently is, even though I'm about halfway through at this point. So I'm really enjoying it so much. And I'm so glad I picked this one up. It's such a beautiful read. Not in the language sense, just... There's something about the way the author writes that I found beautiful. And I can't put my finger on it, but I really like it. So yeah, I'm going to stop waffling and get back to reading now. Because my plan is to totally get this filmed. Well, read first. Get my last clips filmed and get this uploaded tonight. If you're watching this tonight, you know I've succeeded with that goal. So... Let me get cracking with the reading and find out what happens in this book and whether I love it or not. So it's a few minutes later and I've just run into a slight issue with this book. I can't hold my Kindle one-handed like that. Turn it around. I've just run into a slight issue with this book and it's that someone's just been called fatty. And I don't really get it. I don't think... 
it's a nickname that's been used before, or I'd have caught it. Meanwhile, it doesn't make any sense in the context of what's been going on. Meanwhile, it seems to be said in a way that it doesn't bother the person that they're calling it. I'm really properly confused. I'm wondering whether it's a translation issue, but I know a little bit of Swedish. And I don't, I know Swedish relatively well, and I don't see how that could have come up in translation. <laughs> totally boggled. If I catch it again, maybe it'll help me discover whether it's a malicious thing or some sort of weird translation thing, even though I don't see how it could be a translation thing. And sure, it's been like 10 years since I lived in Sweden, so maybe nicknames have changed. So maybe like endearment terms have changed and maybe it's something that they do call people in terms of like in an affectionate way, like, but I don't know. Certainly wasn't a thing back then. I get language changes, so I can't judge on that, but it's a really weird one. Okay, so it's now Sunday night. It's taken me most of this week to finish this book and throughout the reading experience I kept thinking there's nothing making me want to pick this book up. When I put it down I don't want to pick it back up and I'm not really sure why that was because when I was actually reading it I was really thoroughly enjoying it. I think part of it was fear of what was going to actually come in the story so I have just finished it. It is late Sunday night and I need to still edit this video. So good luck to me with that one. But first we will talk about the book. So I've given it five stars. I can't believe that I'm giving it five stars, but I am. Uh, it made me cry a couple of times. I just felt so emotionally invested. It was such a hard read in places and it just gripped me so much. I enjoyed the characters. I really loved the relationships that were built towards the end of the book. I was just like, and I just absolutely, as I said before, I don't know what it is about the writing, but something about it made me absolutely adore it and hate it all at the same time. The pacing was very off, very off, which again, probably led to it taking so many days for me to finish it. But at the same time, it felt like it needed to be that way. It felt rushed if the pacing was anything else. It wasn't meant to be something that would be devoured, I don't think. I don't know. I absolutely adored this book. And I just can't even really tell you why other than I liked the characters. It made me cry and I liked that it was part set in Sweden, part set in New York. And there was cute little romancy bits thrown in and possible romances and definitely never going there romances. <laughs> friendships, such strong friendships that can stand the test of time. Um, then it also shows you the risks of just always just assuming that something's happened because of something that you've done rather than looking into it more. But yeah, I... I don't think this is the sort of book you, book you could recommend to everyone. There's also quite a catastrophic event that happens in the book, which does lead to death. And that wasn't necessarily the most pleasant of reads. It wasn't all that graphic, so there is that. But yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was quite a hard reading places. And I felt genuinely quite rewarded when I finished it. I was quite content with the ending. It could probably have been stronger, but again, I was just so overwhelmed by that point. That I was like, I need to give this book five stars. So yeah, that is the last book of this video because I'm already nearly a week late to posting this. It is late Sunday night, so I'm going to go and edit now, as I said, but I doubt very highly that I may get this video up tonight. It's more likely to be tomorrow morning that you're going to be watching this. 
so yeah thank you so much for watching this video if you liked it please give it a thumbs up subscribe by clicking the image of me if you want to see more book views and other bookish content from me drop me a comment down below if there are any books here that you are tempted to pick up very soon or you have actually already read because these are all now out except for the hat makers and yeah i will see you very soon Bye bye